Alright, so in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a Unix environment on Windows. So, if you watched my video yesterday, well, it's a Unix tutorial. And I mentioned that you can get it on um, Windows, so this is how. So open up your favorite uh, web browser and in Google type SIGWIN. So that's C-Y-G-WIN. Okay? And we'll first link SIGWIN.com We'll get to this page, and we'll open the sign here, install SIGWIN. So it tells us we have to run setup, so let's download this. Alright, yes, okay, so we're on the setup uh, wizard. So it's quite simple, you just follow the steps, well we actually want to download from the internet. All users, yeah, sure. Well, I don't want it to store. Select a directory where you want setup. No, I do not want it to store there. I have no idea why it's doing it there. Let's make a new folder called temp. Okay, that's that's weird. All right, uh, yes, direct connection. You know. If you need these, you'll know yourself. You know. All right, now it's going to go and download. I like to choose just a random mirror. You know, keep things. Okay. Well, I can ignore this because this is the first time. Alright, we're on this page. And this page allows us to choose which packages we want to install. And we can get back to this anytime by rerunning the setup. So it's not this isn't final. We can keep installing more packages as we need them. So I just go here and hmm. Well, and it is. Why well, I'd pick nano. I always like to use this. Just you know, for the sake of it. It's not that big, so. Well, that's about. All right, that, that should be enough anyway. So, so then we'll click next. And now it's going to start installing. Alright, so it's done, finally. And, well, I don't really want the desktop icon. So let's have a look at this. Uh, yes. Let's try something. LS. No, it didn't work. And that's because we haven't set up the environmental uh, variables yet. So, we'll just quickly have a look here. See, I'll show you that we can start it, and they can do it automatically, so we want the bat. And now we can write LS. Uh, in here, so they made the root folder the C sequin folder. And yeah, I'm in C drive now. So yeah, so we can get a Unix environment here. Okay, so let's open up CMD again. Now we want it to work just typing ls from the default command prompt. We don't want to have to open uh, the sigwin.bat file every time. 
Even though they gave us a start menu shortcut and a desktop, because well, we want it to be integrated, so you have both MS DOS and uh, Unix in one. Okay, so to do this, we're gonna have to set up an environmental variable which points the um, command prompt in the direction of uh, the binary files. Let's see what I'm saying. I'll show you which files. So go to the sequin folder, and here, and we'll look at the root of it. It all the uh, binary files which execute are in the bin folder, and that's what the bin short for. It's short for binary. So and when I say binary, I mean executable files. Okay, we can, and here we can see all the files, and I'll just show you that I can hit ls even though I'm not in uh, Sequin, and that's because the ls executable lives in uh, here, and I could show you that if we just click uh, grab, and we can see that the ls executable is in here. Okay, so we want to point the command prompt to this directory, which is Okay, well that that's that's what works. Um, well, I know the directory anyway. So we right when to set the environmental variable, we open the start menu, uh, go to my computer, and right click and go properties. From here, we'll go to advanced system settings, and in the advanced tab, we click environmental variables. All right, so we get a little window like this, and we want the user variable uh, part, and for me, it's, it's we use path. So we edit this. I've already got some paths set up. So if you don't, just type in the path to the sigwin bin. But me, to separate these, you type a semicolon. All right, so now I can start typing my new one, which is C drive, whoops, C drive sigwin bin. And if you don't want to type this, just go to the computer and go to the sigwin folder, go to the bin, and then click this so you can get text and copy and paste. Okay, yeah, I might just do that just in case there's an error. Alright, and now we can go OK, OK, OK. And everything should be set up. So I'll open Command Prompt again. And let's try the magical LS. And there we go, what do you know? It's set up. So let me just test it again. There, we're even getting all that. Uh, what other commands can I do? I'll look, CP DOS 7-zip desktop and let's look at my desktop and there it is we can see the 7-zip file on our, my desktop so it all works here, you get a full Unix-like environment in Windows, works fine, brilliant, just do it, even if you don't need uh, Unix, you never know, I mean, it doesn't really cost anything to put it on. Alright, so thanks for watching this video, I'll be back with more Unix tutorials later, see ya. Hello and uh, welcome to the beginning of my Unix tutorial series uh, for beginners. Now, assumingly, if you've clicked this video, you know what Unix is, but if you've haven't and you just stumbled along on curiosity, well, Unix is an operating system from the 1960s, which uh, we can still find uh, today in our modern operating systems. And that's operating systems like uh, Mac OS X or Linux, which I'm using uh, now. You can even find it on things like an iPhone or a, an Android smartphone. But anyway, you can't actually find it on uh, Microsoft's Windows, which I'm sure most of you are running, most of the population at least. But there is a way of actually getting Unix onto it, which I actually may make a video on uh, later. But anyway, now when I say it, this is a Unix system, I don't mean all this, like all this graphical stuff. I mean what you get in the terminal, or the shell, and you get there by going to the terminal application, or at least it's terminal in my case. On a Mac it's called terminal, I know that, but on your system it might be called console or shell or something like that. Anyway, 
when I say units, I mean what you get here in this um, little application, the text. So when I type stuff in, commands and stuff, you get output. And that's what I mean by Unix, the shell. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my special uh, terminal with a large font for you guys. Okay, so I must say this. What I have now isn't actually Unix from the 60s. Uh, 20 or 30 years ago, whatever, it was rewritten. And what I have now is called GNU. Uh, well, it's not actually called GNU, but well, it's from the GNU Foundation. And the interesting thing about GNU, GNU, is it stands for GNU is not Unix. Yeah, that's the acronym. And basically what it is, it's, it's a clone of it, really. It's Unix rewritten to be open source, or at least open without uh, legal restrictions. Because the original one, Unix, was proprietary, which meant it was had a private owner and had legal restrictions on it. Well, the GNU one, the one I'm running now, run most, if not everyone's running, is uh, open, which means it's got no real restrictions on it. Alright, anyway, back to the shell. Okay, so the Unix shell is a command central thing. You only open it if you want to do something. And you can only do something with commands. For example, uh, this will print out some stuff, and, that's, uh, and so will this. And this will print out the username of, of this logged in. Okay. So one of the main things you anyone will really want to do on Unix, well, the shell, I'm going to refer to it now as a sh from now on as the shell. One of the main things anyone will want to do with the shell is navigate the file system. So make, move, delete files, you know, etc. Rename them, yep. Yeah, things like that. And I'm going to show you that in this video. Okay. So, while navigating the file system, you're going to need to know a few key commands, which are probably the most, the main commands you'll need in Unix or the shell. And the main one will probably be ls. And ls stands for a list. The designers thought it'd be, you know, smart to take out the um, unimportant characters from the words, the verbs, and just make it really short, two letters, ls, to um, list files in the directory. And that's fine, I guess. It's a bit confusing at first, but once you get used to it, ls is better. You can type it quicker, it's, it's shorter. It's, yeah, so ls, use ls to, um, to view the um, files in the directory to list them in a ascending order from A to Z. Okay, so ls list the um, files in a directory and you can see which directory you're in and when I say directory I mean like the path, the file system path of like where you are. So. In terms of Windows, you could have the C drive, you could have your My Documents folder. In uh, Linux, I have my home folder, which I'm currently in. On Mac, it's the same. So, And you can see what current director you're in on the Unix shell by typing the pwd command. And this basically stands for Personal Work Directory. So the current directory you're working in. So let's quickly clear that. So I'll type in pwd. And it tells me I'm in Home Michael, and that's a directory. The first folder is called Home, and in the Home folder I'm in Michael. And this is the directory I'm in. So let's say I want to change directories. So I want to change the current place I'm in, so well, I have to go somewhere, so I'll quickly hit LS to see where I can go. And I guess I'll go to this workspace folder. I can tell it's a directory because it's in blue, or green, outside of the blue in this case, that's because it's uh, one of the attributes of it, but anyway. Uh, so I type in cd, and this is uh, another new command, cd. 
Well, cd stands for change directory. And this command, you can change the current directory you're into another. So I'm going to type cd into the name of the directory I want to go to. Now you notice there's nothing before it, you know, no path before this workspace name. And that's because, well, I'm in this home folder which contains uh, the workspace folder. So cd workspace, we'll hit enter and type in pwd. And look, my work directory has changed to workspace. So I'll type in ls. And ls tells me that there's four folders in this uh, workspace folder. And it's these four. So let's cd again to quadratic one. And it's ls. Okay, and I can see more files. I can see the uh, program I wrote for Android. Okay, so let's say. I want. I have a file here called my file, right? So I can have a look at what's in this my file. There's this cat command. I'll explain it later. And I see it's a text file which has this uh, gibberish in it. Okay. Well, let's say this my file that I've made is in the wrong place. I don't want it in this quadratic factorizer folder. I want it in the bin folder. This here. So what I want to do is move this file into here. And in Linux to do this use uh, the move command or it's typed mv. So mv is just move and we type mv and then the file we want to move which is called my file in this case and then the directory we want to move it to. So bin. Okay and then we'll type ls again and we see there's no my file anymore in this um, directory and we'll type ls bin and you see what I'm doing here before I haven't really typed anything after ls but I'm typing bin after ls now so what this is going to do is it's going to look in the bin folder and list the files in that it's not actually going to list the files in the current one rather the one I've typed okay so you can specify which directory to list files in Alright, so I hit enter, and I see that my file is in the right one. So for the sake of uh, this, I'm going to cd into the bin. Okay, now I'm in it. Okay, so let's say I accidentally misspelled my file. Let's say I want to call it something different, like your file. So I'm going to use the same command I've already told you, it's called move. So this is the rename command, realistically. You're essentially moving this my file to a new file. See what I mean? With a different name. Because, well, when you move something, you don't actually copy it over and delete, you just move it. You're not really copying. So this is the same for renaming. You're not actually copying it over and then renaming it. No, you're just renaming it. So that makes sense to you. Sorry. Action. So you type mv and the original file, and then the new files. And there, and we type ls to see what's done. And look, no more my file, but this is your file. And we can cat it again, see so it's still the same thing. And yep, it's still the same thing. Alright, let's just say now that we don't want this file at all. It's absolutely useless. We want to delete it. Well, to delete a file in Unix, we type the remove command, and it's uh, referred to as rm. rm stands for remove, of course. So we'll type rm your file, and we'll type ls, and it's completely gone. It's deleted. It's no longer on my file system. And now here's a quick shortcut that uh, you may find useful. Uh, Let's say I want to go back. I'm in this crazy directory. I want to go back to my home folder. Well, to go back here without um, typing cd home Michael, I don't want to type this, it's too long. I just type in cd, then tilde, the squiggly line. And in uh, Unix or the shell, the t uh, tilde is a shortcut for, in, for the home directory. So if I type 
you'll see that um the tilde is uh the home path and you know for the sake of it echo the echo command echoes whatever you just um wrote to the shirt command line so hello and it's gonna echo it back all right so anyone anyway, knows cd tilde which is the equivalent of cd home michael and I'm going to see my work directory and it's in home. Let's type ls here. Okay. Now, what I've showed you is actually rather simplistic. It's really simple commands and uh, command arguments as well. But let's say I'll show you some more advanced uh, examples. You know, now, actually, I'll show you some now. Well, actually, no, I'll show you how to find the disk space of file users. So let's say I have this Linux Mint 10 GNOME CD ISO, this disk image in my home directory. And I've really uh, recently noticed my disk is running out of hard disk space, and I want to see how much space this ISO is using. So to do this, I'll type in DU. And what DU stands for is disk usage. So I'll type in DU and Linux Mint. 10 GNOME CD or ISO and it gives me this line 716060 and the file name this is how much disk space um, this file is uh, taking on the hard drive and this is in kilobytes so this is 700,000 no, 716,000 sorry kilobytes which is 716 megabytes of disk space which Yep, it's reasonable. I'm not going to delete it. Um, oh, what I've just done here is um, I've cleared the screen. So let's say I've got a lot of garbage typed up. Yep. Okay, so now I want to clear it. It's all messy. I can either type clear or I can do a quick shortcut and type control and L. Yep. So Control L will clear the screen and leave the current line, or so will clear. All right. So let's get on to the more advanced ones. So let's say I'm in this folder, the root. What's called the root folder, which is the top directory where the entire file system lives, and we can see the home folder that um all my files live in. Okay. So let's say I want to. Uh, CD. I want to move this file uh, one folder up. What, no, 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 I'm CD into another folder. Let's go, let's go to workspace. Let's go back to quad. Okay, let's say I want to move. Yeah, I'll make a new one. Echo. Pay no attention to this. It's just just to make an example okay so let's say I want to move this my file into my home folder from uh, the root folder so I'm here and I want this my file into my home directory well to do this I'd use the move command wouldn't I yep so I'll type move and ultimately I'm gonna have to type all this and you'll notice I'm typing forward slash. Or oh, you know what tilde is? That's a that's the equivalent of this. Yes, is it not? Or the equivalent of your username. So I'm typing tilde, but I'm typing also a forward slash. And the forward slash is what you use to represent a folder, so a folder path. So in this case, bin folder, and it'll tell me it's a directory. Alright, so if I type that, um, yeah, see, I need the forward slash, so it's a directory. So anyway, where, where, was, where was I? I was, I was doing, uh, oh, that's right, moving the my file to uh, my home directory. So I type mv tilde, which is the same as home Michael, forward slash, and what was it? It was workspace, was it not? 
and it was quadratic factorizer and it was my file yes and now space so new parameter tilde or yeah I'm just gonna write her Michael normally I wouldn't write this I just write tilde but anyway enter so I'm gonna look in my home directory and well you see I can scroll in this but on some computers where it's completely a terminal you can't scroll yep so those people they need more to see more uh, information on the screen but they don't have the scroll so in order to see my my file folder which I've moved here I'm gonna have to type in a second command so and it's the button under the backspace with a shift so hold shift and the button under the backspace and you get this straight line and I'm gonna type in less so it's gonna shorten the amount uh, print on the screen I'll explain uh, this thing here later and how this works in a different video it's one of the advanced parts of Linux but and, no, yeah. and this is going to list all the files in the directory part by part so as I hit uh, return the enter key it's going to keep displaying it every other line line by line so I'll keep going down to M see if the my file is there and what do you know it's there so I've successfully moved it away so I've seen all I wanted to see so I'll just hit the Q button to get out of the less and there we go back to the shell so I can still so I know that my file is uh, in this folder alright so I've, I've showed moving files I've showed renaming uh, let's see let's get on to paths alright so let's say I'm in here and I want to quickly get to the home directory well that's one up so I type in CD I could type in this or alternatively what um, you could do as a shortcut is type in dot and dot will um sorry not dot my bad dot dot and dot well the dot will um represents the current directory you're in it's a current folder that you're currently in but dot dot is its parent folder it's its the folder that contains it so cd dot dot will get me up one and I'll type in and I'll see I'm in home so let's see this dot okay so let's go on to the dot cd michael let's say I want to type a command and it's gonna be deleting that my file well I would have to type dot my file oops sorry my bad rm dot slash my file so this is the current uh, directory so these two represent the current directory plus the my file folder well actually you don't actually need this but for some commands uh, you do but anyway you don't yeah and it's deleted the my file alternatively you could have that it's equivalent same thing why I showed you this dot slash is because some commands need it and you'll know what as you time progresses an example will be probably this one ASCII print I don't know I don't, I don't even know what this is but anyway let's just say I have Python you actually never mind I won't even bother with that I have no idea what that is okay so the main reason why anyone would use Unix is because it's a lot faster than a uh, typical file manager I mean I could open up one right now and I could see all the files I've been uh, editing perhaps see I can see the workspace folder I can see quadratic so all the stuff I could do it all here but let's say I, but it's faster because you can do lots of things at once so I, I can see there's a lot of uh, .c files 
So C code that I've written over the time. And let's say I want to organize my directory. I want to move all the C files into another folder. Let's call it C. All right. So I'll go back to the shell because this is um, the view on Unix after all. Type Control L, clear the screen, and I want to move all the C files into a directory in home called C. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is create a directory. And to make a directory in uh, the shell, you type mkdir. And what this stands for is quite obvious, make directory. All right, so we type mkdirc. And this will make a C directory in the current directory which is home zone. so I'm going to type make directory C now if I type ls and then uh, C whoops oh crazy stuff crazy stuff uh, ls star C okay so when I type ls Whoops, I'll type in ls, ls, and we'll see there's a C folder right here. Oh, it's apparently two folders. Okay, so I'll type in cd now. I'm going to go to the uh, C folder I made. Have a look at it. Nothing's in it. It's a blank folder. Okay, so I'm going to go back, back to home. And I want to move all these .c files into this C folder. Well, obviously, I would use a C command, the move command, sorry. And now here's something new. I'm going to type an asterisk. And what this asterisk is is it's a wildcard, or what's referred as a wildcard. And basically, the star re references represents every possible text you could make. For example. You could write my name, Michael, as star L. These are equivalent. Or Mike star L. Or Mike star A L. But it wouldn't be um, Mike star L. A L star. This would not be equivalent. The equivalent. All right, but these two are. So you see what I mean? I mean, in this case, the star represents A E, or in this case, it represents my car. So the star character represents text that you don't actually know. Okay, so I'm gonna type move and then star character dot C. So in this case, it's gonna reference every possible file name in this directory so it's going to represent echo and then yeah but this dot c well that's going to pinpoint it down to a few so it will only reference these it won't reference this because it's got some text after it so it will only reference this file this file and this file but it won't reference any other really because they're not dot c and they're just finished suddenly I mean in this case there's some text after it so it won't reference it All right, so we're moving all the star dot c's to the c directory yeah let's write it as dot c okay and hit enter it's done it all let's have a look at it there we go all of our .c code is moved into um, this C folder, just like that. So, and in one command, relatively simple, I've moved all my C folders files into this folder. Easy, right? Okay. Now let's say I want to copy all those files that I've just moved all these files I want just moved into my uh, into a new folder okay I'll make a new folder right now so 
So I want a clone of it. So I want all these files again in this new folder because currently there's nothing in it. So I'll go back a bit. LS see that I'm in my uh, C folder. So what I type in is CP. So whether I showed you CP yet? Or if I haven't, CP stands for copy. And what it does is it copies files. Okay, so CP, I'm just going to use star. So that's every single possible file in this directory. So it's going to move absolutely everything into new folder. Hit enter. And there we go. What do you know? It's decided to skip. Emitting directory there. That's basically jargon for skipping this directory. Not going to copy it. Okay, so that's how you copy files with the asterisk. Then, so let's say I want to find the files. I'm at my shell. I've been working on some code and now I've lost it. I want to find it. I forgot the directory it's in. So I type the find command. Now it's not called FND, it's not called fin, it's called find. Okay, you can't really shorten it. FD, it could be FD, but I've, it's, you got, no, it's just find. Okay, so now this find command has parameters on it, and it's actually have, has a lot, and I can't actually sit here and explain every single one of them to you because that would take a ridiculous amount of time. So what you do is you type dash dash help and this is a parameter to basically every unix command and hitting enter is going to print out a bunch of information so I can see now that there's more information that can fit on my screen so I'm going to use less or what I basically just did there is I hit the up bu uh, button and that's a shortcut to getting to what you've just typed what you've just entered so here I can browse through all the commands I've typed today or in a period of time okay so I'm gonna hit up once help straight line less there now I'm gonna see all the output that the help command gives you like so okay so I'm gonna look at this what what do I need what do I need it's all crazy this doesn't make any sense to me. So, in order to use this, I'm going to type man find. Now, man is a very useful up, uh, command, and what it basically stands for is manual. So, man will give you the manual for find. Man will not work for actually everything. A lot of commands won't have a man manual, but basically all Unix commands do, but the ones you download off the internet, they probably won't have one. They could, but they probably won't. So man find is going to give us a manual. It gives us help here on the bottom. We can either uh, press H for help, more help, or here we can use arrow keys to navigate. And this gives us a brilliant description of the man find command, which is absolutely excellent. You can become an expert on find with this. Here's a parameters you can. You know, all the information, all this text describing just about everything. Descriptions of every little parameter you have. See, we can have one to turn off warning messages here. Well, I'm already quite familiar with find, and so I'm going to type find iname. So it's going to find all files with this name, and I'm going to type star.c, all my C files. Type. I want to. I only want files, so type F, and ooh, that's all I realistically need. Okay, enter, and it's going to go and find, print every single C file in my uh, directory. Simple enough. I'll type it again for a different type. I'll call it APK, and this prints every single APK file I have in my home folder, or at least my current directory. And you see these dot, these file paths? Well, these are actual file paths relative to what directory you're in now. So, if it's like this here, if I were to do it in this command, 
now what's happening now is this is searching my entire file system for APK files looking looking I literally have tens of thousands of files in this hard drive, it'll take ages to search it, so a quick shortcut there. This third parameter so it makes it so it only searches the home folder. Path must proceed home. Oh, that's right. You have to type it here, I think. Whoops. And there we go. And we see this path is different to this path because they're relative. They're relative to what directory you're in. Okay. So let's see. What to what to do? Clear the screen. Well, let's see. I've covered quite a bit. I've probably gone longer than I should have, but. Hey, it's, it's Unix. <laughs> There's a lot to cover. Oh, man command. So, basically, every command I've said, there's a man manual for. And you can get a good description of about everything. Normally, I don't actually go in the manual. I just type in uh, dash dash help. And this will give me a help for everything. So, it gives you a brief description. I want to copy files by force. I want to copy a directory. No, this is directory. And yeah, things like that. So you know, I'll do an example. I want to copy a directory. So let's see what what do I have now? Um, in my root folder. So I'll go to home. Ls. Okay, let's move this C folder to workspace. Okay. So to do this, I'm going to type you know, not move, let's copy it, okay? So copy, so I'll type CP. You know, I'm just going to show an example of what a typical person who's trying to copy would do. So C and then workspace. This is probably what you do, right? So let's hit enter. And it tells me it's a directory. It's not going to copy the directory. So in order to make to do it, let's look at the help, all right? So this is what you probably should do when trying to do this and it doesn't work look at the help page. Okay, and we see that it, um, we need to read these keep going down, down here we go look at this one R, recursive copy directory copy your directories recursively I think that's the one we're missing. Ah, uh, here we go. V, verbose. This actually doesn't really affect anything. It just um, tells the command to print what it's doing. I always like to do it when um, doing it. Okay, so I'm going to type cp dash r for recursive dash v. Now these dashes, these are what you um, type in order to give a parameter to the CP. And a quick hint is, you don't actually have to type this second dash, you could just type RV. But this is only for some applications, so generally I just type RV like this. And then we'll type C, and then workspace. Now you see it's printed up a ton of stuff, just a ton of information, too much information. This is because I typed V, verbose. So it verbosely told me everything that's happening. So let's have a look at workspace. And we see there's a C file. So let's yeah, let's see what's in C. And it's all this stuff. Okay. So let's say I have a command. I've written up my own command because I'm a programmer. So let's say I have one quickly compile this code don't really pay attention to this okay and I have my command called GCD let's say I want to execute this command in this directory well you'd guess I typed GCD right this is what you'd assume would happen well if I hit enter it's, it's not gonna work this is because when you type GCD it searches the 
uh, bin folder of the uh, root directory so uh, this folder and this folder and this folder it searches these three directories for uh, GCD and it doesn't find it so it tells me command not found well obviously it's not found because the uh, executables in this directory it's not in any of those three so in order to execute this command I'm going to have to specify that the command is in this directory the dot slash remember this well anyway dot gcd hitting enter and the command is executing this is the uh, program I wrote and we'll yeah. and yep so that's basically it yeah, I have no idea how long this video has gone for, but I think it's enough to cover uh, file moving <laughs> and stuff. This is probably too long, actually. Let me just look at this. You see here, there's a Unix shell as well. It's what I'm using to record my uh, screen. Looking here, it tells me it's a whole gigabyte. Wow. doesn't actually tell me how long it is, but oh, here we go. 35 minutes. Wow. Long video. I'm going to end it now. Okay. Goodbye. I'll make another uh, few more videos on Unix. See you in those videos. Bye. Okay, so hello and welcome to my uh, second video on uh, Unix. And just watching over the first one, I noticed a few factual errors in uh, the video. And so a quick Google search, well I noticed them after I did a quick Google search on Unix and I got to this site, excellent site, wonderful site, freeengineers.org forward slash learn Unix, yeah blah blah, I'll put it in the description box below. And it's basically got all this like factual information, you know just syntax and stuff for Unix commands. And it's just great, it's just condensed into one quick little page that you can probably go through in well 10 minutes. And I do recommend you uh, get on here because not everything I say is maybe the best way it's uh, done. And you're probably the best teacher for yourself because, well, yeah. And seeing a few things I got wrong or not as correct would be like CD doesn't stand for current direct change directory, it stands for change current directory, which I thought was somewhat odd. CCD, yeah. And PWD stands for present work directory, which makes a lot more sense than what I said. And also looking at this, you can just type CD to get to your home directory. So for example, I'm here in uh, my home directory now, but I'll go to my documents. And instead of typing this, I could just type this. I honestly didn't know that until, well, that quick Google search. So yeah, you should actually go out and try to find information on Unix yourself because well, not everything people tell you is the perfect way. Okay, so I'm looking at this. I'm going to use this as a guide now <laughs> to uh, to explain. Uh, let's see. Um, I think today I'm going to cover permissions, file permissions, and uh, uh, let's see, and maybe this as well: moving, renaming, and copying files. Okay, so permissions, permissions, here we go. In our Unix, well, we have, just like every other real sy uh, file system, or whatever, we have our permissions for files. So, for example, if we like download a file off the internet, we might not want it to be executable. We, don't, we might not want the uh, person to actually physically be able to execute the file because well it might be dangerous, it might be a virus, it might be malware, something like that so there's an executable permission which this X represents and well I think the X represents it yeah I, I do believe and uh, you may also want to keep files private for example if there's multiple users on your computer you might just want the cliff user to be able to uh, read it rather than the whole system so any user on the farm uh, system so permissions 
Also, you might only want a file to be read-only. You might not want anyone to write to the file. If it's like a some sort of special... I don't know, whatever. So, let's see. Let's do examples, shall we? So I'm in my home directory. You can see that. And let's say I have a new file. Let's, yeah, I'll make a new one. And I want... Whoops, we've got a CD to test. Okay, so let's clear that. So I don't have any files in here. You know what, I think I'll I'll do this one first. Moving, renaming, copying, no, not sorry. Editing, viewing, files. So with this I'll create some files and then I'll modify the permissions on them. All right, so let's see here. In Unix, you can do, uh, there used to be an editor called Pico, which uh, was proprietary. It had a private owner or entity, whatever. So we couldn't actually be included in the uh, the public GNU one. So they had to make a clone of it, and they made a clone called Nano. So you might get the uh, the naming convention here. So with Nano, you just type Nano plus the file name that you want to edit, so I'm going to call it a file. Okay, so nano a file, and it'll bring me to this little editor. So here I can just write text, just updates live. And you can do multiple lines, whatever, you can hit enter. Um, it behaves just like a normal text editor would, except without a mouse. But that's fine because you have the arrow keys to navigate, and well, this is alright. And now let's quickly get out of it. I hit Control X in the menu below. That give you the, what you can do. And this little up thing stands for Control. So Control X brings you to a new menu. Do I want to save? Yes, I want to save the buffer. So I hit Y. What file do I want to call it? Name. A file's fine. There. Now hitting LS, I see that A file is there. Okay. And let's just say I just CD to this directory. I see there's a file called a file. Let's pretend I don't know what's in it. I want to see what's in it. Well, there's a command called cat. Now, cat, like this file thing says, will dump a file to the screen in ASCII. So that means is it'll print out what's in the file in the ASCII uh, syst, uh, standard. So, cat a file. Now this is written in ASCII text, which means like the 128 letters, numbers in the table. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. And we see exactly what's in the file. This is what I wrote down in, uh, and cat will print it out to the screen. Now turn it over. Let's say the file is really long. So you know, let's make a new one. Let's see here, where can I go? Where can I, I'll just go here. So I got this file, and you see it just a whole bunch of information has come out onto the screen, just printed out. But let's say I want to see the beginning of it. I don't want to have to retype it and and do this. No, I I only want to see the, this beginning part of it. Well, you can do that, and as a file, the command called head, and head will give you what's referred to as head of the file and by that I mean the beginning of it so head file log dot text will print out the beginning bit of text oh it's actually quite a lot oh no no it's not it's just this part okay so it's printed out the beginning part of it and there is a another command that's just like this it's called tail and we'll do the opposite it prints the end of it so I'll just quickly type that, and it gives me the end, the last few lines to the file. And let's see the uh, help. We might be able to select how much lines we want. Yeah, here we go. Hitting N, we can uh, specify how much lines. The default's 10. Okay. All right. So let's see here. Let's see what else is there. What else? Okay, so head and... Oh, yeah, see, look. N will t give us the amount of 
numbers. Uh, yeah, you could use these are the other editors, VI and uh, Emacs, and VI is just a crazy editor. It's just really I have no idea how to use it. I mean, I couldn't care less about it actually. I'm sure if you do do a quick Google search or a YouTube search, you'll find a tutorial on it. I'm not even gonna go on this. It's just I don't see the point. It's ancient. Emacs, uh, well, I could say the same, but I do see quite a lot of people still using it. I don't even have Emacs on my system. Okay, I'm sure I have VI, I think everyone has VI. And you can just see from this, I don't even know what's going on. Uh, I don't know how to save it, just get out of it. I don't even know how to get out of it. Okay, that's terrible. There we go. Had to force close it. Alright. So, basically, if I ever wanted an advanced editor, I wouldn't go VI. I'd just get, like, a graphical one. Like, really. Alright, so, what was I? Less, yes, you can write less, and instead of using it like this, like, uh, whatever, and then doing that, you could just write less, and then the file name. So, file log. And we can do that. And it's the same thing as before. We hit Q again to leave it. Okay. So that's editing, viewing and editing files. So to view, you type cat. To edit, use an editor to, um, to, well, uh, what's it called? Edit the file. So let's go back to our test directory. Alright, so if you're seeing this, alright, so if you're seeing this, uh, what's it called? I've decided that after just doing the permissions for, uh, part of the video, it got way too complicated. I didn't do it very well, so I'm just, I'm going to cut the permissions part out of this tutorial video. It's already getting long enough anyway. I'll come back to file permissions in another video. Okay, so, right on. See you then.